how to draw a pumpkin and add patterns with a focus on shading and value. This is a really great drawing if you want to enhance your shading skills. I designed this tutorial for the most basic materials, paper and a pencil. Of course, you can do Zentangle patterns using any materials you have, a pen, you could even do this with colored pencils. But my focus is what if you're stuck at home? What if you're in art class with a substitute? What if you just wanna practice shading? Sometimes I think just pencil drawings get a bad reputation. They're so fun, they're so dynamic, and this one focuses all on pattern and shading. If you love learning about art, hit that subscribe button so you never miss an art tutorial. First, we sketch our pumpkin. I'm starting by drawing two parentheses or curved lines mirror image on both sides. I'm drawing really light sketchy lines and I'm trying to take up as much of my paper as I can. I draw kind of an organic line at the bottom and then I move on to my stem so that the top looks 3D. So I'm drawing a smiley face line with two lines at the top that go past it because I want my stem to look like it's in the center of my pumpkin. I'm going to be using my eraser a lot. Pumpkins are organic shapes, which means they have curved lines and edges, and every pumpkin's a little bit different. So this one is definitely a little squattier, not as round. And once I kind of have the basic shape mapped out, I'm gonna add my stem. Now pumpkins have really cool like curly Q stems, but for this exercise, I'm keeping it very simple, and I'm putting a few curved lines to really give it that 3D effect. Now it's time for the lines or indentions in the pumpkin to make it look 3D. I'm going to repeat those same two parentheses lines that I started with in the dead center of the pumpkin. On the left hand side, I'm going to make parallel or matching curve lines from the center all the way to the left hand side. On the right hand side, so it looks really 3D, so it looks very pumpkin like, I'm going to reflect the opposite curve and follow that parentheses on the other side until I go off my edge. So this is going to make it look really round and bulbous and just give it that pumpkin-like quality. Now that I'm committed to those shapes, I'm following along the bottom and I'm making an indention at the bottom so it looks like it juts out. So just follow along that the lines that you drew, make them darker and pay attention to how they go behind the stem and kind of wrap underneath the pumpkin. You can keep it really simple or really detailed. It's totally up to you. Erase any lines that are awkward, darken the ones you're committed to, and once you have your sketch, it's time to add those patterns. I'm starting with a very basic pattern where I draw a series of curved lines and I don't fill up the whole space, but I kind of map them out. Once I've done that series of curved lines, I'm gonna go back and overlap and fill in the rest. So watch how I'm copying that first line that I drew over and over again until I run out of space. The lines will change as um, the space changes, and this is just a fun doodle I've been doing since I was a kid. This one always makes me think of spaghetti or hair, and it's just a really great way to warm up. I love teaching using patterns because if you're new to drawing, it's such an easy way to get great results. If you've been drawing your whole life, you have this blank canvas to come up with super creative patterns. So you could work in a theme. Maybe this is a Halloween themed Zentangle pumpkin and you could add bats and you could add um, a jack-o'-lantern face and just anything you can think of. So I'm keeping my patterns really basic and I'm focusing on shading. So I'm skipping the middle section because it seems the most important, so I'm a little nervous about what to put in there. And something I know I'm good at is shading stripes. So this little pattern, this section here, I'm gonna shade basically a value scale with my stripes. Now, if you've never practiced a value scale with your shading, click the link above, and I highly recommend doing this first. So basically, you're going to be shading values, which is the lightness or darkness of a color, and I like to do from dark to light. This is gonna make your stripes look so 3D. So I'm using a really cheap pencil. No offense, Walmart, they donated um, pencils to my classroom. So thank you so much. Shout out to the Walmart in Mustang, Oklahoma for donating these pencils. They're good for sketching. They're not great for shading, but I'm gonna try it out anyway because the whole point of this drawing exercise is not about having fancy materials, but using very cheap materials you have at home or in any situation to create beautiful art. So you can see at the bottom, I'm shading as dark as I can, and my goal is to get at least four values. So dark gray, medium gray, light gray, and white. So I'm switching my pencil out for a trustier brand. It's the one that starts with the T. 
Now I can't remember how to pronounce it, so I'm not even gonna try. And so my point here is to make the pumpkin look 3D with my stripes by having it darkest at the edge, almost like a ribbon. And then it fades to lighter as it goes towards the center. So dark gray, I have my medium gray, I'm getting to my light gray and I'm gonna keep it lightest in the middle. So what I'm going to do is fill it in almost all the way. And a really good tool that you can use when shading is a tissue. Now be careful, you don't wanna over blend it, but you can blend it just a little bit. And I love using my eraser. And then you can get that lighter value to kind of meet up with the white in the middle. Doesn't that look so 3D? It makes me think of like a ribbon um, or just a shaded stripe that really makes the pumpkin look like it's not flat. So I'm gonna leave a smaller stripe in between that's just a blank white because I love a black and white pattern. And I'm gonna repeat my steps again, shading from dark to light, basically doing a value scale. So that's why I love teaching Zentangle drawing with pencils because pen designs are great, but what a great way to practice shading with really no way to mess it up because you're shading patterns. So it's not like you're trying to shade like a person's face or a cup. It could really be anything. So it's a really great way to gain confidence in your shading abilities. So I like to balance how much shading I do versus just like black and white pencil patterns. And I recommend Googling um, pattern examples. Also, I didn't mention this, but when you're drawing the pumpkin, if you Google pumpkin clip art black and white or pumpkin clip art outline, you'll have really easy references to look at if you don't actually have a pumpkin in front of you. So looking at images is always your friend. You're very welcome to make up whatever patterns you would like. Think about patterns that would look cool with shading and you wanna kind of mix things up. Notice I have these big gray stripe areas and then next to it I put more of a smaller intricate pattern. So that's gonna make it more interesting to look at if you kind of mix up dark light areas, small patterns versus big patterns. And now that I've shaded those stripes, I'm going back in and I'm doing the same lightly by adding like a medium shaded area to the top and bottom of my pumpkin because I want these areas to look 3D too. So this is a great way to elevate your drawing and make it look even more professional by adding some shading at the top and bottom, leaving the middle part really white so it starts to look three-dimensional. I'm going to add another pattern here and I call this the wavy checkerboard. This is a super fun pattern because you do it just like a checkerboard but no ruler is required. So you draw however many vertical lines you have space for and then cut across with your wavy kind of horizontal lines. I like to plan out by putting little dots which areas I'm gonna shade in because a checkerboard is every other, every other, black, white, black, white, and mapping it out sometimes makes it easier. Also notice I put a tissue under my palm because I didn't work very smart. And so I already have shaded areas and I don't wanna smear it with my palm. I'm gonna go in and fill in each wavy checkerboard as dark as possible so it has that really nice contrast of black and white. I'm going back in and doing my light shading on the top and the bottom of my pumpkin because 3D is the spirit here. I want it to look just like that round bulbous. What a fun word, right? That roundish bulbous pumpkin shape. Be careful when using a tissue because although it does help you blend easier, it does wipe away a lot of the nuance of value that you have and it really makes everything the same kind of light gray. So that's why I went back in with my eraser to make sure it wasn't all the same. I'm darkening my lines and my stem because I'm really feeling like the pumpkin is coming to life. And I've committed to a pattern for that center section. I'm gonna shade polka dots. If you've never shaded a sphere or polka dots before, click the link above and I'll walk you through how to do that step by step. So shading a sphere is similar to the value scale, except instead of shading a straight line or a stripe, you're shading something to make it look round. So I always start by shading the shape a lot of S words, of a crescent moon. So you see how it looks at the bottom like it's getting darker, like a crescent moon? That's always the way I start. I'm making sure to put something underneath my hand so I don't smudge. So my goal here is to have four values. Here's my darkest value, dark gray or black. 
and you don't shade straight across because you want it to look rounded. So you're gonna continue shading in kind of like a crescent moon or semicircle motion to give it the illusion that it's three dimensional. This is gonna really make your pumpkin just look awesome. You can shade anything to look round. You could put cat faces on this. How cool would it be if you actually did a crescent moon with like a cat sitting underneath it? So just because I'm doing really basic shapes doesn't mean you have to. And so you can see I left an area white, I have a really dark bottom, I have a medium and then a light value. Then I'm gonna use my tissue very lightly to blend it. Notice it's really smudgy. And then I get my eraser back in there, blend a little bit with my finger, and that looks pretty 3D. So to go off your edge, because to look really nice, you want your polka dot to kind of have that off the edge or going into the other section look, you're gonna do the same thing where you shade like a crescent moon, but you just don't go all the way around. So you would just kind of stop short. So kind of like a semicircle, but whatever shape that you have left and you fill in from there. Use your tissue if you want, but don't overdo it. And remember, your eraser is your friend. I'm gonna speed things up a little bit since you've seen me do this twice. Now that I've shaded so much, I wanna add a little bit of shading to the stem. So I'm using pretty similar, not as many values, but a similar concept to what I did in my shaded stripes. Darker at the edges, leaving it white in the middle for that 3D shaded effect. Loving it. Going back to darken my lines, I really love my polka dots. Feeling great. And I have a hard decision to make, which is why I'm procrastinating. What do I do with my last section? I could repeat a pattern that I like. Um, I think I want to do another shaded section since I have the polka dots and stripes, but that's it on the left-hand side. Everything else is kind of just black and white. So here is my student's favorite easy shaded exercise. I call it the tie-dye or the fireworks. So you shade like a starburst pattern as dark as you can, and then you're going to fade out from that with your medium to light gray, and you can get as many values as you have room for. So this is like a firework value scale. Dark is in the middle, and it fades as it goes out. My students love this one because it really is easy and it just looks cool. So if your goal is shading, try this out. And you can put as many of these as you have room for. You could have lots of them that are small or you could have just a few that are large. And don't forget to erase any area that you want white. I just love this one. It's such an easy way to shade. I'm adding just a few finishing touches, adding some dark areas using my eraser so it's my best craftsmanship. And I'm really happy with how it turned out. It'd be a great sketchbook page, a great drawing exercise if you finish something early, and just a fantastic way to celebrate fall and how to shade. Thank you so much for sticking around and making art with me. And if you're interested in more Zentangle tutorials, check these out.